Good afternoon and welcome to Robin Minds. My name is Isabella Adediji. Now we know that Nigeria continues to suffer from education inequity as millions of children are out of school. And it's even questionable for those who remain in school, the quality of education received. Now there's a lot that government is doing, but to solve this issue of education inequity government alone can't do that and that's why we have organizations like teach for nigeria who are deploying fellows for two-year fellowships in underserved communities to improve educational outcomes and also create positive change as leaders joining us is a board member and ceo of teach for nigeria in the person of ayodele olajiga welcome to robin minds thank you Isabella. Now, just tell us what Teach for Nigeria is doing, like in a nutshell, for those who are unfamiliar with the work of Teach for Nigeria. Okay. So if you think of education, there are two challenges, like you mentioned. There's access, and then there's the quality of the access. And so we work on the quality of the access. Well, we, our program basically, you know, we train fellows for two years, we place them in underserved communities, and then they work with students on improving learning outcomes and the like. We also work with existing teachers as well. And then once they've done their two years, they are, our alumni then go on, hopefully, to provide leadership in, in society around addressing education and equity. So I'm going to take you back to my intro, which looked at out-of-school children, looked yes. at the state of education in Nigeria. What are the mm -hmm. official statistics? Because these days, depending on whether it's the World Bank or UNICEF, um, the, the data keeps um, fluctuating. But what we know is that Nigeria continues to top this list when it comes to out-of-school children. How would you evaluate the current education situation here in Nigeria? Well, I think the, the, the challenge is dire. I am, first of all, I use UNICEF, um, but whoever you're looking at, the number is a lot of millions. One is that one in five of out-of-school children in the world is in Nigeria. I think, according to UNICEF, we're 10.5. And what that means is that you have a section of our society that are starting off life and they've got no access. And so, and the situation is just going to get worse and the gap is going to grow. And if you want to grow a society that is competitive, a country that is growing, you need everybody to have the basics so that they can have options. Once you miss the basics, your options narrow. Now, I know growing up, um, I've had parents, people of the older generation talk, could say good things about the public school system. But now we're seeing a trend where most parents want to put their children in private schools, but not everybody can afford um, private school tuition. And even with the rising cost of transportation or food, petrol, um, we're seeing more people going back to the public schools. Now, how can those people in the public school get a good education when there's so much disparity between those private schools and public schools. So if you want to solve any, if you want to solve problem at an individual level, private works. When you want to stop it for the country or systemic, you've got to address the public school system. And so first of all, primary school education in Nigeria is, is free. So it's really all about working very hard to improve the quality of what our primary education is. In the underserved areas, no infrastructure, we don't have enough teachers, the quality of the teachers and the training is not where it's supposed to be. And that's where we work. And really for me, it's our alumni, we have over a thousand of them now and it's growing, is that at some point, these change makers will overwhelm the system such that our primary, you know, um, our public school systems become top of the pack again. I mean, they're never going to overtake, you know, the private school system, you know, but for the masses, for everyone, the public, the public systems must work, be it transport, health or education. Now, some will argue that if you want to solve the problem of education in Nigeria, we need to have higher budgetary allocation. But that's something that's within the, the, the purview of the government but what can be done now in the short term to start really raising those educational outcomes within the public education system? Well, from our, I think, first of all, the budget, what is allocated to it is nothing. I mean, I was in a, at Onga, I think a couple of weeks ago, and I heard in Syria alone, education is now 25% of the budget. Wow. And that's kind of the direction we need to go. I mean, it's three of them. It's education, healthcare, and food. Those three things. We need to raise whatever the contribution is now to maybe half 
of the budget, you know, but I don't speak for government. I think, you know, in terms of trying to solve this problem, we need to look at the primary education system, the foundational learning, because even if we can't solve secondary school, once the foundation is right and the individual is okay, they can look after themselves. But if the foundation is off, then nothing happens. And, and what are those systemic challenges that are plaguing the primary school education system? Because we have graduates who can't read and write. We have um, graduates who cannot take on jobs because they don't have that foundational literacy. So what needs to be done at that primary school level? So for me, I'll, well, at least as I said for me, Teach for Nigeria, we focus on numeracy, literacy, and what we call social emotional learning, which is around self-awareness, problem solving, all of those things that makes the individual allow you to take hold of your agency. And, and those, are, those three things we think are very crucial. At the moment, I think UNICEF, 70% of Nigerian you know, kids in schools can't read properly and they, you know, maths is not, their maths is not where it's supposed to be. The more controversial part of it, which I ask myself, is not a Teach for Nigeria position is, is in asking people to learn English before they can, you know, learn the other things like numeracy, be able to think, is that a hindrance? Because in, English is a language, right? So should we be teaching people these things in their local language and then making sure they take English or whatever language is required as a second subject rather than if you can't speak English, suddenly you're out of, you know, maths, all of those things. Hmm. So I think if the government is serious about making sure that education is accessible, then it has to take into consideration the different languages spoken before the child even gets into the formal education system. Now, I want to look at the role of the fellowship in addressing these um, education inequities that we see. Um, what's interesting is that it's a leadership initiative. So let us know what the fellows do beyond just going into school to teach, because some would say NYIC already solves that. So what's mm. different for the Teach for Nigeria Fellowship? So they spent two years. So we're producing leaders who spent two years in an underserved community. So the first thing that happens is the empathy and the understanding of the problem, they get it. They become resilient. And then they, there's something they do in the fellowship, which is solve a problem in the community. So it's called the BD Change Program, right? So they're solving a problem. So when they come out after the fellowship, we then see, see them go on to try to address problems at a system level. So we have, for instance, in one of our alums in uh, Ota, they have, a, they have a free school, right? Which is they take kids who can't, there's no tuition. You, they bring them in there and they're giving them that foundational education. And it's that type of stuff that we think we're going to start to see come out of our alumni. We're hoping some of them will also go into the public sector because you have to change the system. And there's and because or the other thing we found is there's no one single problem in education in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's almost different from community to community. So it going in, so you can allocate more budget at the federal level, but you still got to solve it at the local government and state level. And are there any disparities you're seeing between rural, urban, and semi-urban areas when the fellows are deployed to these underserved communities? So what we've seen is that the kids, in terms of potential, be it rural or urban, no difference. What you really, what the issue is that in the rural areas, they don't have access to infrastructure. Some of them no no electricity, no internet. So it's all about a addressing the infrastructure issues, then giving them you know high quality teachers and they will compete anywhere in the world. And these fellows, what impact do they have on their communities and even on the other teachers who are already in these schools? Are they seen as threats or is there a complementary relationship going forward? In the beginning, it was like, who is this? Mm. But now what we're seeing is, first of all, the, the fellows are learning from the existing teachers the existing teachers are also learning from the fellows. So we're seeing that, you know, collaboration going on. We've also then added existing teachers to our fellowship as well, so that you have that happening. Then the other thing is we've also introduced school leaders development program. So we're basically then tackling it at the leadership of the school, existing teachers and new fellows. And so what happens is you have seen teachers where you, they were, they're basically changing mindsets because suddenly teachers are like, oh, I would like to do this stuff differently. So the application to our fellowship from existing teachers is actually quite competitive. Mm. 
The other bit is that they also work with parents to get them engaged in education and the like. So all of this, so in the community, every, any community that we're in, from the leadership of that community, that's the Oba or whoever it is, all the way down, everybody knows we're around and the fellows are working with everybody to address you know, education inequity issues. And then what are some of the measurable outcomes? Have you seen maybe improvement in literacy, numeracy? Um, have you seen maybe school retention figures go up, um, the tangibles? Yeah, so Rand Corporations, the US, they, 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 it's an independent party, looked at our program and what we've seen is numeracy and literacy. Our kids, the T, TFN classrooms are about anything between four to five months ahead of the non-TFN class. And what I, what's then going to happen is that that just starts to compound uh, on itself. So we are at least a term ahead of the non-TFN classes, at least in numeracy and literacy. So how are you able to fund all of this? Um, do you work with government? Do you work with stakeholders? And I know people are listening and saying, oh, how can we support? So what are the avenues for that? So they have, they, we basically have four sources. The one is state government is crucial because when our fellows go in, it's important that they get onto the state's payroll because yeah, otherwise it becomes unsustainable. Then we get a lot of funding from foundations, both local and international, who support the program. Individuals can also you know, go to, on our website and set up either one-time donation or recurring, uh, recurring donations. And then you can also, in kind, so uh, Starlink has given us internet access, which will be hopefully rolling out in open states. Uh, we also have, there's a company called Blue IT who's also given us, um, uh, what do you call it, solar, solar power as well. And finally, uh, TY Danjuma Foundation support every year, I think, the training of anything between 500 to 600 teachers as well. So everyone can get involved, everyone, and everyone should get involved. So are there any um, ongoing fundraising efforts that individuals can also plug into? Because you've mentioned foundations, but um, you mentioned also the website. Maybe you can share details of the website and any fundraising activities going on now. Yeah, so our website is teachfornigeria.org. So once you click on it, a big banner will come out saying, give so you can so that's there and then we're doing a 40 million naira drive with Anz and renee where we're supporting we want to do about i think it's about a thousand kids that want to support their education so individuals can you can go to Anz and renee or you can also check through our website uh, the link to uh, to donate to the Anz and renee 40 million naira uh, fund, uh, fundraising drive and I think my final question is, what does a world in Nigeria look like to you where there's education equity? It's, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful Nigeria, right? It's a Nigeria where, you know, where we're creating a, a more prosperous and equal society in terms of how resources are everywhere. People are, people are enjoying themselves. Everyone is, you know, is, I don't want to say wealthy, but everyone is okay. Um, and I mean, I'll give you an example. There's a community now where there's a community program that came where they, the kids go and, you know, gather uh, plastics. They sell it to make, uh, to make furniture for their classrooms. So, and in that community, so everybody, so that by being in that community, we've raised the wealth of that community. So I think. If we start to address education, things like productivity issues that we have in Nigeria, we disappear, we have more innovation, but we have at a mass level. It's not just, you know, pockets here and there, but it's more at a mass level. That's what the issue is, because mm -hmm. there are people who are innovating and productive in Nigeria, but we're not That's seeing that scale. scale. Yeah. Yes. So one more time, the website address for those of our viewers that would like to donate, to contribute in cash or in kind to the work that's being done by Teach for Nigeria. Yeah, so it's teachfornigeria.org and you're right on our website. Just scan and give some money. Thank you very much, Ayadele Olajiga, CEO and board member at Teach for Nigeria. Thank you very much. Okay.